So welcome back to our little workshop shed. So today we're going to be showing you how we turn scrap pieces of plywood such as this into wooden newt boxes like this. So it's a strange one, although it's still early in the year, the sunshine and the bees so active you can't help but get a little bit excited for what's to come. So although they're up in the air and flying around a little bit at the minute, they'll soon calm down these bees. Hi, uh, I'm Debbie, I am Stu, dog's body. So again, all this wood came from uh, off-cut scrap wood. Uh, we've begged and borrowed and just scavenged uh, pallets and, and things like that. I had to purchase these bits of 18mm ply. They're off-cut from a local wood yard. Uh, the pieces of 3 by 2 have been left over from certain projects we've done around the home. And these bits came from a packing crate that uh, a friend had. So we got a few of these last year. So we cut them all down to size and we've just had them stored for a while, just sat there until we, we need to use them. So let's start with the uh, actual plywood then. So this is, as I said, has already been cut down to size. And all we have to do then is uh, cut all the other little bits and get the nuke put together. So we use these nukes through the season uh, for our queen rearing, the great for mating and queens, things like that. And we have actually overwintered bees in these nukes uh, with a proper roof. Uh, they're absolutely fine, no problem at all. So let's start with the connected pieces of timber that hold the nuke together. So the frame rails and the bottom rail. So I'm going to cut a few more of these down to size so we've got plenty in stock. But why I do that? You can see what else we've been doing this week. So while we're out here, we might as well give you a little tour. So, this is our honey house. So it started off as a fridge wagon body. So I bought that and we've since converted it. But I'll just take you into the office and have a little see what's going on in here. So we've got do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Debbie, I am Stu's sister-in-law, also known as the Dog's Body, and I help out with the social media side of things. Um, I also help out um, markets and things like that, so hopefully I will see some of you soon. What else are you on with today, Debs? What have we got you doing? Um, just replying to a few messages and I'm going to look at some posts and see what we can do. Get our YouTube subscribers uh, a little bit higher. So she's on the plane a little bit there. Debs does all sorts <laughs> for us. Literally, she, so if you contact us on social media, chances are it's going to be Debbie you speak to. So you may also notice I'm uh, I'm slowly taking over Debs uh, Debs workspace here. Well, perhaps at this time of year, we're, we're building more and more equipment. We're buying more equipment in, uh, but they're still not going out on the bees yet. So we've literally side of Debs desk is all our nukes and things like that ready to get painted. Uh, and as we, you'll see outside in a minute. Um, all the equipment that we bought last week, we're starting making our way cleaning through that uh, and once it dries up again we'll get it all sprayed up. Might even get Debs involved with that one, eh Debs? Um, not with these nails. <laughs> <laughs> so we've currently got a looking at hotels because Debs entered us into a little competition which was? The uh, small business event for Theopathesis um, and the guys won so they'll be going there in February to mix with and network with all of the small businesses. Um, and meet Theo and get a certificate and yeah, that should be really good. So seeing she did that and uh, and go send us down to Birmingham, might as well get Debs to sort the hotels as well. So nothing rubbish, please, Debs. Yeah, okay. And that's Rox, our guard dog as well. <laughs> so we'll take you out into the workshop. Why am I here? Obviously, last week I mentioned about I went to Bradford and picked up a little project. So this is our little project. So I'll. I'll do a little bit more on that as uh, as the weeks go on. So that's our little crane re ready to go on our trailer to help out with uh, with our supers and our lifting. So and then into the workshop. Oh, so I'll take you up to the workshop. Oh, as you can probably hear, it's lashing down to the. It's putting some rain down. I tell you. So we've got a uh, our new boxes that we collected last week. So we're slowly, as I said, we're slowly making our way through those, getting them cleaned up. Uh, we built a few more frames from yesterday. Um, so we just need some decent weather now so we can start getting stuff sprayed and painted. Um, we'll take you into the workshop, so... Uh, just dodging the rain there. So uh, a couple of subscribers said, um, after the pallet video, they said, oh, you, you, you know what I mean, it's alright for you, you've got a workshop. To be honest, I don't really see this as a workshop. It's uh, three metres by three metres square. It's just a large shed. But don't get me wrong, I, I couldn't be without it now. It's uh, it's a life saver. The fact that it's attached to the house as well. Um, obviously, we, we run this business. We, we, we're literally no fat. 
um, you know, my keeper or Redstone. Um, we've got family members, things that aren't working and doing bits for us, so which is fantastic. Couldn't do it without them. So yeah, it's not as clean as uh, it was when we filmed in here last week. We've been uh, we're getting a little bit of pallet, more pallet wood sorted, uh, getting some stuff built. As you can see, we're on it. We're on with some uh, some floors, some more roofs. Um, in fact, while I'm here, some of you guys might be able to help me out. I have a Chinese diesel heater which is showing it E07 fault code. I've changed the front screen on it, um, obviously taking it apart, the only thing I can think of now is the motherboard. Failing that I've got this uh, this hammer close by and I'm just going to take it to it. Um, but yeah, if anybody knows why it's showing that code, E07, um, put it in the comments please point us in the right direction because it's done nearly nothing uh, and we, we Debs uses it in the office so um, it will stop her morning as well so it's a strange one although it's still early in the uh, the sunshine and the bees so active you can't help but get a little bit excited for what's to come I think like a few people fighting the temptation to start feeding and putting pollen patties on these bees and uh, I'm just worried to go I've been keeping me on the weather and it's still meant to go rough on and off for the next month or so so I think we'll give it a few more weeks yet before we even start thinking about feeding anything. So there's quite a few in this site now that uh, are needing a bit of feed. They're starting to get through it quite quickly. Uh, as you can see because I've opened them up as well they're not really happy these ones but we'll get some more feed on get them closed up and they can crack on Shaking the bees like that doesn't hurt the bees at all. It's just a, a gentle way of getting them off the uh, off the tubs. So although they're up in the air and flying around a little bit at the minute, they'll soon calm down these bees. So the bees in this one, as you can see, are flying in and out. But unfortunately, it's a dead out. So that can happen for a number of reasons over winter. But I've already been through this one. I can see that it was either a late super procedure or a poorly mated queen. They just didn't have the numbers to get through winter to maintain the warmth in the hive. So unfortunately these have died out. So to prevent any um, robbing or uh, to prevent any disease or anything like that, not that we, we have diseased bees, um, we'll get these sealed up so uh, this, they can't continue robbing this hive out. So, to be honest, I'm made up with that site. I'm really, really happy about it. Obviously, we've got the one dead out, which is nothing really can do about that. It is what it is. It's not fantastic, but uh, what it could be a lot, lot worse. Um, so, some monster colonies there. Where uh, I'm gonna have to keep my eye on the feed situation because some of these were uh, were desperate, to be honest. Um, obviously, the, the warmer the temperatures get, the more active the bees will get, and ultimately, the more food they're gonna consume. So. Over these next few weeks now, we'll uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll keep coming up here, checking, um, and then if it's uh, it, and if we can see a break in the weather and we can get some decent uh, warm weather coming in, uh, we might contemplate getting some feed, uh, some liquid feed on these bees as well, as well as some pollen patties. Because ultimately, what we're trying to do, what we're aiming for, is that early rapeseed crop. So um, start building them up and uh, and getting them ready for that. So touch wood. All's good. So all we've got left to do now is assemble it.
So there we have it, there's our knee. So there's various options you can do now. You can either put a solid floor on it, or a Varroa floor, get some, buy some Varroa mesh. Or my preferred method is to build one of our solid floors, but just in a nook size. And that way the, uh, the nook can clip on and off. You can double these nooks up, you can stick them on double brood or whatever you like, use one as a super. Or what I used quite a lot last year, not only to get my queens mated, but when we're bringing nukes on, and there was a bit of a flow on, we use this system. So this is two nukes that we've made, with no, without flows. And then what we've done, we've built one of our solid floor bases, with a division down the middle, obviously to prevent the queens from uh, getting each other. There's still two individual nukes, but that way we can put a queen excluder on the top, uh, supers on top of that and the bees can work away filling the, filling the supers with nectar and ultimately those two colonies will coexist in theory in the same box so I said you can either put crane bows on these so we use this uh, insulated bubble wrap you may have seen in a few other uh, videos or you can put a queen excluder on there and just place supers on top both colonies will move up store nectar uh, and ultimately honey in those supers and then go back down to the relative nuke boxes while still having two queens in there so we used this in great effect last year uh, not only to get a honey crop off them but then we overwintered uh, two colonies in these um, last year so you please place your two crane boards on top like so and then all it requires then is one single roof then for the two colonies so if you did just want to use the new on its own, like say you could use a, a, a solid floor, a raw floor on it or whatever you like, and then we just build these little straightforward roofs to sit on top. Got any questions on any of this or anything else? Please add them in the comment section and I will promise to answer everyone. Thank you very much for making it to the end and until next time, see you again.